Now that we have our open and close conditions set up, we'll move down into plunger statistics. And down in plunger statistics, this is just all of the statistical data on how my plunger cycles have been running. So as we highlight statistics on the tree on the left, we'll see that we have our inputs tab. So here, if I wanted to watch the plunger cycles go through, I could click monitor, do a refresh interval of one second, and then I could just set here and watch my pressures, uh, my tubing minus line pressure. I could watch all the different inputs as it's working in the plunger logic. At the top of the screen here, you can see the current state and where we're at. We can move to a tube tab. Here we could watch flow rate and different tube values. If we wanted to get down into the plunger stats, we could see how many arrivals we've had today. Um, if we changed out plungers, this is where we could come to reset the plunger counters that I'll show you a little bit later on how many fast and slows. So if you changed plungers, maybe a different type of plunger, you would want to reset that statistical data and start over. And then on the strings here, we just have some of our timer information. Now as I come down the tree, down below statistics, we have plunger cycles. And so what we have here is a total cycle. So we have the close stamp at the beginning of the cycle, and then we have a reason why we closed. We have the casing, the pressures, uh, the flow rate um, at the time that we closed, the what those values were at that time. And then we have whenever we open, we have what, what the reason was for that open. Now I don't have some information here in my simulator, but you would have something like maybe a tubing minus line reason here, or maybe it's a timer. It would just give you the reason as to why um, you were open um, at that time. And then you have your pressures um, at the time that you opened. And then once that plunger arrives, what, what kind of arrival was it? Was it a normal, a fast, a slow, um, and then how long did it take to arrive, and then the, the uh, time and date that it did arrive. And then we also give you some pressures and rates here um, at that arrival. And then we'll complete the cycle with another closed. This page here can be uh, used for uh, troubleshooting a plunger because it kind of gives you an overall view of what's been going on at particular times. Uh, reasons for closes and opens, uh, what your arrivals were doing. Um, the default here is 30 logs. Um, you could pull in some more if you wanted to, or you could decrease that down to say something like 10 cycles. But whatever the number of cycles you have here, down below will give you an average for say tubing, and will give you an average for line. Uh, over those cycles and so as you can see if you were starting up a plunger and really all you knew was time uh, you could run that plunger say uh, 10 times or uh, however long it takes to go through that many cycles um, and then you could come into your statistical screen here and here at the bottom you could take a look at your tubing and line averages to give you a good starting uh, reference for what kind of controls you could use for uh, pressures or maybe a flow rate. Now you'd also want to take into account that this is an average over those last cycles and then you're going to have to take a look at what your arrivals did during those cycles and then make that manual adjustment to either make those arrivals a little bit faster or maybe a little bit slower. Now we have a daily tab uh, just to give you uh, what's been going on for that contract hour day or yesterday. And if you're wanting any of this data, say in a host system, uh, you can just mouse over those values and the app array register will pop up for you. Now down under plunger on the tree, now we're just getting into the plunger st statistics. Uh, what 
what have been my statuses over the last um, 10 cycles or 30 cycles. Um, break it out for how many fasts I've had, how many slows I've had, um, how many consecutive normals have I had. Um, so just plunge your data there. And now if you want to look at fails, when have my fails happened? Uh, what was the reason for my fail? So another place to come and troubleshoot. And then we'll give you the timer information down here in the uh, time statistical data. So these are just whatever your, uh, your close limits are, your timers for close or open, uh, what your arrival time windows are, and what your current arrival timer is if you happen to be in a state three waiting for a plunger to arrive. So now we're going to move into plunger trending. I don't have trending turned on here, so I'm going to go back up to applications. I'm going to add a, uh, a trend app. It's going to turn it on in 95 for me. So what the trend system gives me is not only the statistical data that the plunger app gives me, but now I can come in here and dictate how often I want to grab values from, from my plunger controls. So I've already got a plunger trend that I like to use. And so I can build this. So it's a one time, you build a trend file, and then you can come load it into any meter right from the start. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at how I built this trend. You would want your description of whatever your, your uh, trend, uh, plunger trend, or whatever you want to call it. Scan status is on. Um, I'm doing a snapshot in this uh, trend. So every three minutes, I want to go out and take a picture of my value and then log that value. And the five values that I like to grab is casing pressure, tubing pressure, my line pressure, my flow rate, and my arrival times. Now if I come and edit one of my trend variables, we've got what we're calling it, engineering units, and then the app array register. Now notice I'm not going down into the IO interface for this IO point. I'm going into the plunger app for my app array register. I'm wanting to get plunger trend data, so I want to know what the plunger application is using. Then I want to tell it I want a snapshot. And then if I leave my min and max here for my trend graph at zeros, it'll go ahead and auto size my values for me. So I say OK. Now I've got a number of records here of 2,000. Um, that's how many records I will have before I start with the first in, first out. So once I reach 2,000 records, the oldest record will be the first to be replaced with a newer value. So it's a first in, first out. The other thing I would like to say is that the way that this trend is set up, if you use our plunger analysis software, it likes to see the plunger trend variables labeled like this within these units. And so then what you can do is you can run your plunger trend, collect that trend data from the plunger well, output it into a CSV format, and then you can load that plunger trend data into a plunger analysis software, and then take a look at those plunger cycles, get your average pressures and rates, take a look at what your arrivals have been, and then it, can, it allows you to look at recommended settings based on um, the trend data that's available. So this trend system, this plunger trend, allows us to feed another plunger analysis software or a host system and take a look at how our plunger is, um, is running outside of PCCU.